and good morning. It's now just about nine o'clock on Sunday the 14th of July. I'm Andy and this is my allotment. I'm going to give you a quick weekly run round of what's happening on the allotment, where I'm up to, anything that's new and anything that I think is, uh, might be of interest to you to show you. So let's get started. Um, first of all, uh, I've got some new flagstones, some one foot squares. Uh, I'm not trying to pave all this area, I'm just simply laying it down to suppress the weeds a little bit until I've got use for the flagstones. So, all this area that was absolutely heaving with grass last time, I've now covered. With the exception of a little bit in the middle, I've got some volunteer potatoes from last year. So, uh, hopefully we'll get a few out of there. Not bothered if I don't, to be honest, because I didn't plant them this year. They've what's left over from last year. Uh, it just shows the problems of growing potatoes. So the first thing I put in the ground here last year, put them in, in a rainstorm on the um, 12th of July, Friday the 12th of July last year and uh, they got blighted because they're too late and all the rest of it but I got some potatoes off them so I'll get a more, few more this year, fantastic nothing special about them, they were shop potatoes from the supermarket that were gone sprouty in the cupboard rest of the potatoes ok, get out my shadow, excuse me for that um, doing very well, as you can see they decided to flop in the middle there uh, and all the way to the back there's flowers galore coming on them. Now Blue Star Dave talks about taking the flowers off because all the goodness goes into the flowers and doesn't go into your potatoes. But I've been talking to some of the old timers who've been gardening for like 60 years and they tell me keep the flowers on because that's the sign to the potato to bulk up because it's coming to the end of its life. It's now creating the flower. When the flower goes then all the goodness goes in the potato. So what they're saying is wait till the flowers go after two weeks dig your potatoes. So, sorry Dave, but I'm trying it this way. You try your way, I'll try my way. Let's see how we do. Another experiment. Woohoo. Okay, we're going to square foot gardening bed. Now, uh, slightly different here because the pack choy I had at the front and the back have now been harvested because they're bolted in this hot weather. So they've been harvested, I've had it a few hours, taken a few home, and they're very nice. The French beans I had there were growing too tall for this area. I thought they were dwarf beans when I put them in. Obviously, they were climbers because they were climbing everywhere. So I've moved them to my bean bed, transplanted them, but they're not taking too well in this weather, I'll show you later. The rest of it, as you can see, is doing rather well. Lots of lettuce coming up, the carrots are doing fantastic. Spring onions, brilliant. Silver skin onions, equally brilliant. Um, the let the, the uh, spinach is going well now, it's start, started harvesting off that. The radish are doing really, really well. In fact, I've uh, taken all the radish out the front end here, and I've got some back at the back there, which is uh, French breakfast, which I'm going to harvest some of today. So I'm going to barbecue later, so I'm going to take some salad and some fruit to go with it. I'll show you the fruit in a minute as well. Brassicas, doing well. Now, we're running out of water on this site at the moment, so we've been very sparing what we're actually using, which is causing a problem on a couple of my beds, but and the hanging baskets especially, as you'll see in a moment. But uh, I'm going to get some more water for those shortly and water them up. But the black currants are doing brilliantly. The gooseberries are doing absolutely fantastic as well, though I've not seen any fruit on those as yet, but then I haven't really looked too hard to be honest. Maybe some in there. And then the blackberries that were sold to well, the black currants are sold to me as blackberries, which are actually black currants. Now there's a theme here for today, because I've got a couple of things like this. I got these from Aldi and they were sold as bare roots, and I've sold these as blackberries. And they turned out to be black currants rather than blackberries. So not too happy about that at the moment. But, we shall see. I'm going to write to them, I think, and uh, do a little complaint to see what they do. Big flag iris here. Flowers is finally fading on that. This is going to be moved um, when it's gone dormant, end of the season. Cut it right the way down, dig it out and move it over towards the pond. We're hopefully to be a little bit more happy. And it won't be my way. Now then, this bed, the fruit bed. These three at the top here. Again from Aldi, were sold to me as bare-rooted red currants. Turns out they look very much like raspberries. Uh, again, I'm not too bothered about that because I quite like raspberries and they're in the right place because the rest of my raspberry bushes, out my shadow, are here. Uh, I've harvested some of them today. And there's some others on there which are coming ripe. But if I wanted raspberries, I bought raspberries. I didn't really want raspberries. Anyway, move around to the other side. The rhubarb bed it needs a good weed by the looks of it, but fantastic plants. These two at this end here are um, 
what should we call the first year or second year. Um, Diana here gave them to us last year as little seedlings, so I'm not sure that classes as their first year or not. But they're brilliant, they're about uh, three foot tall, loads and loads of stems. Uh, I've harvested a couple of stems off one of them, but I'm trying to avoid that on the other because I, they look very slender stems and I'm not too sure what I should be doing. The one at the back is a Victoria, which is about four years old from home, that's been harvested, but there's still loads coming on it. Okay, fruits and herbs. Loads of strawberries coming as you can see, I've harvested from these this morning. Uh, got a fair amount of strawberries off them. Marjoram's doing really well. The oregano doing very, very well indeed. Mint, sage is just taking over. The hanging baskets uh, doing fine. I harvested off this one, lots of little strawberries. The one at the back, however, is uh, wilting. It needs some water, so I'm going to get some water for that when I finish the video. On this side, more huge strawberries, as you can see. They're not quite ripe underneath, so I'm leaving those. They'll be ready tomorrow. A couple more on there. And then I've got some chervil, which is doing absolutely brilliantly, some dill and some uh, coriander which is going to seed already. I'll take the flowers off that and hopefully prolong it a little bit. Now while I'm over here at the table, I'll just show you what I've harvested today. Now, buckets of mixed fruit, Ras oops, sorry, raspberries and strawberries, some cracking big ones in there, some little ones, all different varieties of strawberry. They're going to be going for tea today when I go to this barbecue, so I'm providing that as well as a salad. Um, rest of these, I've really got to get them in the ground mainly herbs, a couple of lettuce, some chard and then there's some herbs here and down there there's um, some more herbs, mint, sage, lemon thyme um, and lemongrass um, they're doing great, what more can I say? quick look inside the polytunnel while we're here we have got lots of tomatoes coming up and a couple of chilies mixed in with them uh, now this tray, I only sold this tray um, less than a week ago, it was last Monday, uh, the 8th of July, so that's uh, 7 days ago. I put 12 sweet corn in at the front, uh, I put 9 or 10 beans, and then 10 peas. I've got 10 out of 10 peas, I've got uh, 6 out of 10 beans, and 11 out of 12 sweet corn. Now my previous record with sweet corn was pretty bad. It was 2 out of 12, and then 5 out of 10, I've now got 11 out of 12. Obviously it was too cold before nothing to do with the seed, the seed is very viable obviously I just was too early, I didn't have the right conditions maybe, I don't know now you'll notice I've only got one pot of potatoes here because um, last Monday night I was down here with stepdad Ken and uh, decided we'd, we'd pull one of the first earlies this had been flowering for ages in here with a pendulum javelin been flowering for absolutely ages we decided to pull it out and see what was in there um, obviously when I pulled this out we got a lot of little potatoes, uh, a few decent sized ones, a lot of little ones and the consensus of opinion was that I'd done it too soon because uh, there were lots in there that were like a centimetre across if I'd left them a couple of weeks they'd swelled so it's either I haven't watered it enough or I haven't given it enough time so I'm watering these as much as I can nowadays and I'm probably going to harvest the first earlies in a couple of weeks second earlies two or three weeks after that the early main crop two or three weeks after that and the main crop when I get a chance to now I've done the embed, looking really good. Need a few weeds in there, needs a bit of TLC, but nothing serious. Now, my other onions and my shallots, a bit of a different story. Uh, these have been suffering with the water, with the, with the drought. I can excuse my shadow. Um, and also, we've got a family of foxes on here that have been digging. And they've dug up half the onions and carried them off. And they've chewed the rest. The tops have all been chewed off them. The young foxes, it's going to happen. If I wanted to save it, I should have put nets over it. Learn for next year, maybe. But I don't think I'll do onions next year. Shallots I'll definitely do, when I'll net those over, but not onions. Okay, moving onwards. Petrol spinach on its own at the top here, doing well. Comfrey going absolutely wild. Um, I'm not going to harvest this for compost tea or anything like that, I don't think, this year. Not certain, because I really haven't got the time. But... Uh, as you can see there right in the middle, one of the onions left over from last year has actually got a flower head on it. So I'm going to save the seed on that and try and sow onion seed. But I'm not going to get sets from the shop. Um, it's cheaper to buy onions to be honest. And I, I could use the space for something else which is more expensive. Lettuce and walking onion doing really well. Right in this bed, 
This is where the remains of uh, my brassicas are from last year. This one was a purple sprouting. I harvested the head off it, which was very nice. I have got four cabbages left, four spring cabbage in here, which needs to be harvested fairly soon. And then I can use this entire bed to turn over for something else this year. Not sure what I'm going to put in it. Might put some salad crops in maybe, I'm not certain. Okay. This bed, red cabbage. Now, the red cabbage is getting holes all over it. I've been in there several times and searched. I can't find a single caterpillar, so I don't know what's going on with that. And the holes are very cat they're not slug holes, they're not pigeon holes. So I don't know what's going on. I'll have another go later on today, perhaps. But uh, I'm just a bit bemused as to what's eating it. So if anybody knows what could be eating it, other than the usual suspects of slugs, cabbages, and slugs, cabbages, caterpillars, and pigeons, uh, none of which appear to be in there, or I haven't found them anyway, then please let me know. It only seems to be happening on the purple cabbage that's really being decimated. As you can see, this one at the front's got a lot of less, it's like a lace doily at the front. Calabrese in here, all the main heads have been harvested on these now, and what we've got left coming up are some little side shoots. So I found if you, if you take the main head off and then leave the plant, it grows little more, uh, more little tiny shoots which grow into reasonable sized broccoli heads. So you can harvest it as if it was purple sprouting and they're very, very nice. Now, when I was given these, I was told they were Brussels sprouts. They don't look like Brussels sprouts, but uh, well, we'll see, maybe. On the far side, and you can see it through there, Laurel Rosso lettuce, which are doing really well, and some collies, which are also doing well. Now, my favorite bed at the moment is this one. This is where I've got Oops, falling over planks of wood. Uh, French beans are on this side, which have actually started to climb at last. They've been in the ground for about four weeks, but they've just sat there and done nothing, and now suddenly they decided to go. We have courgettes. This is a nice salarond, as you can see in there. There's a rather nice little uh, courgette in there, which I'll be harvesting later and taking home. Sweet corn, again, doing well in the middle here. There's the seven sweet corn, the original sweet corn I put in there. Uh, um, this is where I'm going to put those other 11 I'm going to go in and around here to make another block so they should hopefully be nice as well on the far side I've got a courgette, a zucchini lots of flowers but no fruit as yet um, we shall wait and see on that one now at the front here is where I was putting the runner beans now these ones are planted in I planted runner bean in Orma in here and didn't get very many out and this is where I've transplanted my climbing French beans to they struggled because of the heat with the transplanting. They've been watered in regularly, having loads and loads of water. They're surviving, but that's all they're doing at the moment is just surviving. Some of the leaves are wilting dramatically, as you can see. Uh, I think they got bashed when they were being transplanted, to be honest, because they were all tied together and knotted together as, uh, with, with their tendrils. So I'm hoping they will survive, but if not, I've got the other six or seven beans which are growing in the polytone to replace them. Now, this side... Now, I came down here yesterday, and this bed is absolutely doubled in size since yesterday. It's, it's amazing. We have some climbing beans, which, as you can see, are doing very well. They're nearly at the top of the archway. Lots of flowers on them, but uh, no fruit as yet, no pods as yet. And for some reason, this end of the tunnel is doing much better than that end of the tunnel. But they're all starting to climb now, which is great. In the middle here, this is the pumpkin that self-seeded itself self sowed itself rather uh, from the um, pumpkin I threw onto my compost pile which was here last year now this is uh, grown exactly in the right place I would have put a pumpkin well I would put a courgette perhaps not pumpkin because I've got a pumpkin at the other end of the bed as well which I'll show you in a minute but um, I don't know if you can see around the side here I've got one two three and around here four more pumpkins coming up now I've got takers for two of these at the moment uh, if anybody else on the site is watching this video and wants a pumpkin, these are mammoth pumpkins, just let me know and I'll, I'll get one of these out and put it in a small pot for you. And uh, when we're sure it's going to survive the transplant, then you can have it, no problems. In the middle of this bed is another courgette zucchini, which is getting a little bit over swamped now by the pumpkin on the far side. That's a pumpkin mammoth. Now, same as last year, I found that this pumpkin has given itself a fruit straight away, right from the off. Look at the yellow thing in there. Now, this, uh, when that came out, there were no male flowers around whatsoever. That was the first thing that came on it. 
did this last year as well when I had one of these. Now I've got two vines on this at the moment. We've got a little tiny one here, which is going off that direction, and a much bigger one there, which is going off in that direction, which is the way I want it to go. I want it to go right the way to the end, like I train it back round down the path here. Because the other one at the, down there as well is going to send a vine out. I'm not sure where I'm going to put that one. I might try and train it around the front and down the trail down the front of the bed here. But what well, either way, these beds are doing absolutely brilliantly. So I came yesterday and they seem to have doubled in size. Now, broad beans on the front, doing really well. Lots and lots of pods on these. As you can see down there, this, this plant's got quite a few on. Half a dozen broad beans on that one. That's one of the uh, the second, oops, sorry, I'm not, not showing you what I was doing there. That's one of the second plants that I put in, which has, obviously hasn't got anything on as yet. I could probably, if, if I harvested these now, get maybe eight to ten pods off, but I'm not sure when to harvest broad beans. Again, if somebody can tell me when the how can you tell broad beans are ready to harvest? I know some people say take them really, really early and eat them as like a munch too. Uh, but I think these have gone past this now. But I'm not sure when to harvest so the beans will be inside will be ready. Um, how do you tell? So if you can let me know, please leave a comment below and uh, I'll be very, very grateful. Right, uh, one development that's going to happen next week is I'm going to have a shed. Now, as you can see the polytunnel there at the moment, the original plan was to have a two foot bed to one side, a 15 inch path, a two foot bed and then a shed to the right of it. Not sure if we're going to have the second bed at the moment because I'm having a discussion with stepdad Ken as to water flow etc. Because the water drains from that top end of the plot up there where the polytunnels are, uh, probably the uh, bins are, all the way down here and drains off there. So what he's concerned about is if I put a bed across there I'm damming the water which is going to build up underneath the shed. And then he went on about talking about uh, putting those one foot flags I showed you at the start as a, uh, as a square base for it. Now, if the, and cement them in. Now if that's not going to damn the water then I'm damn sure that my raised bed on the surface is also not going to damn the water. So we're going to have a discussion about that. But um, uh, my local minister uh, left our church about 18 months ago. New minister's coming in and he's got a bigger family than the old minister so he wants a bigger shed for storing bikes etc. Now my church were going to get, just get rid of the shed, they were going to destroy it or get someone to take it away and, and dis destroy it. What I found out about it is, whoa, hang on a minute, can I have a look at it? So I went down on uh, Saturday afternoon, or Saturday morning rather, and had a look. And it's in pretty good condition, considering it's about 15 years old. A couple of planks will need replacing, the roof needs refelting, but everything is sound. The floor is sound, the frame is sound, the windows are intact. So I'm going to have a little working party of me, my son and my stepdad on Monday. Who's going to go down and... Uh, basically um, take the shed apart on Monday and then on Wednesday Tony from the plot here is going to come over with his trailer and uh, basically give us a hand to bring the whole thing back so by Wednesday night I shall have a shed on site um, next weekend I'm away so I won't be doing anything then but the weekend after we'll probably be getting all the basing done if we don't do it through the week that is and uh, I will have a shed which is then the last of my infrastructure that I need because I'm not going to have anything else. I've got a polytunnel, I'll have a shed and then th that's basically all I'm doing for the rest of the year apart from building up the fruit beds etc around the back of the polytunnel and over here and the bed in front of the polytunnel. So by then we'll have probably somewhere in the region of three quarters of the plot cultivated this year. The rest of it's going to have to wait. I just simply haven't got the time uh, to build those new beds and I really don't know what I'm going to do with them either to be honest. I'm not certain how I'm going to lay out the top end of the plot. Because all I know is that one part of it, my son wants to use it for his growing giant veg. Or he did last year, he's not really said anything about it this year, so I don't know. But um, I just really haven't got an idea. Um, I don't want to do it the same as I've got the rest of the bed with the, the, you know, the long square beds, etc. laid out. I'm going to put two more down that side where the tiles are at the moment, uh, just to make it even. I'm probably going to put another bed parallel to the bean beds over there. One or possibly two to come to the end of the path. I'm going to have a main path that runs between the beds that are running away from me at the moment and the fruit beds you can see over there. I'm going to run the whole length of the allotment. Or in the length of the plots behind where the nettles are now. That's the, the only one definite thing I know is happening over there. That, that's, that path is going through there. 
what I'm going to do with the rest of it at the moment, not certain, but uh, it's going to be fun finding out. Anyway, I've waffled on for 20 minutes now, so that's enough for now. Um, probably take a little trip up to the apiary and tag that on the end of this video. But uh, apart from that, that's all from me from down here. But uh, if you've got any comments, please leave them below. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Because um, that means that you'll not miss out on any of my episodes at all. And um, I hope you enjoy what you're seeing. And uh, I'll see you next time. Hello, yeah. Bye for now. Uh, just a very, very quick update. Uh, one thing I forgot to tell you about earlier is that uh, we have actually now got ourselves a beehive. Uh, no bees to put in it as yet, we're still waiting to get a swarm. But uh, I thought I'd bring you up and go inside the apiary on the allotment where you've never actually seen before just from the outside. Uh, as you can see at the moment, there's a number of hives in here already. Now the hive box that we've got is very much like this one, although this has got three layers, the one we've all got has got two. I've got a spare bottom layer because that's where the, uh, the, the bees, uh, the queen lays the eggs and the brood come from. The upper ones are where they get the honey from. So that's where we stand at the moment with what we've got. Now what we've got to do is find a site for it. As you can see there's a number of them in a row here. All pointing in different directions. You notice the bees are coming out the, at the side on this one. And the front on those three. And a bit diagonal on that one. So what I'm planning on doing is having my beehive where this flag is here and facing that way so it flies out through that gap so they're not going to interfere with any other bees etc while they're coming out. It's three foot away from the nearest hive which is there. That one's coming out straight from the front and going across this way and that's where I'm planning to put it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to if, leave the flag here and then make sure that there are other beekeepers on the site are happy where, where, where I want to put my hive. Well, I say my hive, it's actually my wife's hive, she's the one who's interested in bees and beekeeping. And then when we do that, when we get the, the go ahead, I'm going to level this, this area off so I can actually have a nice bit to put them on. Put some bricks on it to, to lift it up off the ground and uh, get the beehive up and running. Um, I'm going to put some black fabric a foot either side and underneath this, the flag and just peg it down or hold it down with wood or bricks or what have you just so that uh, when the grass does start to crook I can actually get in there still. All this is fairly good at the moment, it's been cut back recently uh, but it does grow fairly fast in here. That's the little enclosed area as you can see all the way around got uh, a huge hedge here and then the fence. The fence is there designed so that as the bees come out they've got to go up and go over it. They don't, they don't fly along at ground level. They go up at least four or five foot and fly higher. So hopefully that will be fine. See it's just about half past six in the morning now and uh, there's bees coming out. So anyway, just a very quick update that just to let you know what we're up to with this and when I bring the hive down here I'll get the video camera set up and show you as we build and uh, put it all in action. And you can see a hive from the start to hopefully producing honey. Uh, anyway, enough for now because uh, the bees are starting to get a bit active from being here. So I've got no cover on at the moment. I've just got my t-shirt on. I don't fancy getting stung. So I shall leave them to it and I will uh, speak to you later.